So um, he has uh, also written articles and presented papers about parkour, free running. We call, here in France, we call that yamakazi, all these guys yamakazi. running around and jumping around. Sure. Uh, actor training and street protest with collaborator Tom Wells, who was supposed to be here because initially uh, they had planned on uh, wrestling here, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately the room is a bit too small and it's not really convenient. The floor is not uh, it's not a man. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so we just didn't want them to get hurt. So yeah, uh, with collaborator Tom Wells, he's one half of the dance and physical theater duo, the Dangerologists. His present research focuses on the intersection of performance and sport, and is currently preparing an ethnographic project on masculinity, the fitness industry, and the neoliberalization of work. And the title of his paper is Work and Shoot, the restless body through discipline and resistance. Okay, merci beaucoup. Um, I am going to switch the focus slightly from what we've been talking about today, which is, um, and I'm sorry to have missed the first day as well, but I want to shift the focus from um, the semiotic and um, signifying lens of wrestling um, away from narrative and to think much more, um, instead, of, instead of what it means, I want to think much more about what it feels like and what that feeling uh, could mean. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be talking about bodies. And if I, I, I was thinking about le catch a, uh, if this um, paper was going to be le catch a, it would be le catch et danse. Um, my background is physical theater um, and uh, performance studies and dance studies. Um, so, but rather than simply um, analyzing wrestling in a choreographic way, what I want to do is to discuss the embodied politics of the form of wrestling, um, which I think a dance studies perspective can help to identify. Um, the main concept of why that might be is the dance studies concept of co corporeality, um, corp uh, bodily reality. Um, so in dance, um, we, in reading dance, we attend to the physical materiality of the body. And um, thinking about that within various frames in which that dance takes place. Um, and one of the main frame, and the frame that we like to use to apply to wrestling, is um, the theatrical. We like to think of wrestling being a theater. And so what does, exactly does that mean? In general, I would suggest that in dance theater, in any sort of theater that involves even the hint of narrative or um, some form of dramatic representation, usually what the theater as an apparatus functions as is a way of erasing labor, and erasing the laboring body. And one of the ways in which this translates is, and I don't know if this comes across in French, but um, we say a laborious performance in English, like that's a really labored performance. That means it's always pejorative, it's always a bad thing. It means that the performance actually hasn't come off well. Once you see the labor of the, 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 the working body on the stage, it means that it's bad. Um, the, the body in general, we, in theater studies, we often think of this phenomenologically as something that is doubled. So there is a dramatic body. There's something represented by the narrative. There's Stanley Kowalski, the character. But there's also Marlon Brando's body underneath that. And the two are very intertwined. Um, this is what Stanton Garner, a performance theorist, calls the bifurcated mode of presence characteristic of the theatrical field. So two modes of presence on the stage. But as much as the theatrical apparatus wants us to forget about the laboring body and see the dramatic body, it wants us to create, the theater wants us to create a sense of this world in front of us being real and spontaneous. So it's not actual, um, it, there's not people working to create an illusion, it just is that illusion itself. That is what the apparatus wants us to believe. But the body itself remains this form of, um, of a point of disturbance of this frame. So there is always this rupture that is the body itself. It's a phenomenon of the flesh that resists the incorporation into a system of dramatic signification. So for Stanton Garner, he talks about coughing. So if an actor coughs, if an actor sweats or perspires overtly in the middle of a scene in which they are not meant to be, we begin to read these by, as an audience as the eruption of the body into the story, effectively. Um, but these are symptoms of labor and not labor itself. But I, what I want to suggest is that wrestling as a form of theater is one of the 
one of the um, theatrical forms that is about labor. And I, I want to make a really, really broad claim that the reason that people enjoy watching wrestling is because they actually want to go and see people work. And that's also, I suppose, one of the reasons why wrestling is a little bit um, abjected as a form. That's why it's put down, because we see, um, we don't want to admit that we see people working, because there's something a little bit monstrous about that, going to pay. You wouldn't go and pay a maid and then just watch her do her job, yes? There is something, uh, it, it, it brings us into our embeddedness within a capitalist system of labor, wage labor, and variable capital, and there's something very um, odd about being an audience member and paying to watch somebody work. But that's kind of the reason why we like to see wrestling. Um, and I, I came to this reading through looking at some of the kind of double meanings of double entendre in, in wrestling itself. I don't know if they work in French, but in wrestling we have the word work. Yes, work as uh, um, the kind of physical practice of cooperation, as well as work in the sense of all re wrestlers in England at least, and in America are called workers. They rarely say wrestlers. Um, and that, that way of um, the saturation of the discourse of work into the discourse of wrestling is, is very, um, it's, it's, it's a kind of citational network between, um, between two very different but at the same time very complementary discourses. Um, we know from Scott Beekman um, and his history of wrestling that work fights emerged from a kind of moment of capitalist exploitation when the promoters took control of the um, free determination of the labor of the wrestlers so that whereas wrestlers could go anywhere um, they could um, they could actually compete, worked fights uh, in fixed fights emerged when promoters said, if we determine this outcome in advance, we can make a bit more money off of you and we could do some more spectacular moves. Um, but what work, interestingly, is within the context of wrestling, I think, is, is specifically the physical practice of improvisation. And the response to um, somatic cues of the partner, um, as well as visual and oral cues. And I think that this points to the politics between bodies that happens in wrestling. So the background to um, this reading was my uh, beginning of an ethnography in professional wrestling. In August 2011, um, there was uh, a call out for the Live Art Development Agency in London, uh, a workshop with uh, Jamie Lewis Hadley, who's observing the, um, the training there. Uh, and he's a former professional wrestler in the UK, and he's become a live artist, performance artist. Um, he works with um, he works with many of the sort of apparatuses of wrestling. Um, a lot of he he does stuff involving light tubes and um, and blading, but he also works with the kind of physical the what it, with the physical affect of wrestling. So one of his performances was um, a three to four hour lockup between bodies, where um, where people could come from the audience and lock up with him, and then it was just a durational performance for four hours, just to feel what it felt like to be in that kind of intimacy with another human being. So uh, I, I, I was in this um, initial workshop, and um, uh, I began an ethnography at the same school, and this is called the London School of Lucha Libre. This is a small gallery space, an art gallery space, um, tucked under a railway arch in Bethnal Green, East London. It's run by a couple of trainers, uh, Gary Vanderhorn and um, Greg Burridge, who are fairly, um, Greg Burridge at least is fairly well known in British wrestling, and it runs on an ongoing drop-in model. Um, the split in the, the uh, diverse student body includes people who are actually going to be future pro wrestlers. It includes actors, dancers, and artists as well. Um, split of men and women is around 60-40. Okay, so in this ethnography, I'll just summarize some of the things here. Um, Gary, um, the trainer, he calls wrestlers stuntmen for the theater, and I think that's quite an apt way of looking at it. But whereas um, stuntmen usually work with fight choreographers in order to rehearse and structure a fight, what distinguishes wrestling is this practice of physical improvisation, um, which is carried into the training. So. What I found is the emphasis on kinesthetic and proprioceptive, so the knowledge of where your body is, um, awareness. Um, so in one drill, 
uh, which we did every single day, four trainees would take their places on the mat and we would shoulder roll from one side of the other to develop ring awareness. You needed to know physically and in an embodied way where the other people were in the ring. Um, uh, one very tedious evening, I found myself in this quartet and we had to do it over and over and over again. And Greg became like this kind of brutal ballet teacher. This is what I noticed that he just, he said, oh, again, again, five, six, seven, eight, again, again, again. It was like chorus line, you know? <laughs> um, and, and he just said, you, what the point of ring awareness is, is that you just got to get out of the way so that the other blokes drop kick don't, drop kick don't actually hit you. Um, that's a quote from him. But with practice, the, and this is where it begins to connect to dance, is uh, the body learns to work. It, it learns to do these things in an unconscious way. It, it, the knowledge that you build up in terms of the actual codified moves becomes embodied and tacit knowledge. Um, and so uh, where this, I think, manifests itself, this practice of physical improvisation manifests itself most strongly is in chain wrestling, um, which I think resembles this dance practice of contact improvisation to a very surprising degree. Um, and I'll get to what contact is in a second. Um, it's, uh, in, in chain, we, the, many of the moves are just simply uh, Greco-Roman or freestyle wrestling moves with extra codes added to ensure that they can be per performed um, uh, safely, and wrestlers must work loose, as they called it. Um, and so they they keep a light grip on the body in order and take the tension into their own muscular structure in order to sell the move, which is a very interesting way of um, of looking at a physical practice where you're supposed to be um, working with another person. So you're always in a, in a, um, which points to its ethics, you're always taking the pain onto yourself. That's what I took from that. Um, Tyson Smith connects this improvisational process, uh, process to um, Arlie uh, Hochschild's concept of emotion work. Um, he says, uh, quote, when both performers are malleable, pliable, and relaxed, moving as a synchronized couple is easier. The adjustment to pro wrestling praxis demands emotion work because it is antithetical to the ordinarily hard body of the athlete. Um, so the overall effect then of this of work is that this chain um, appears like a seamless act of individual aggression, but in reality it's a form of teamwork. Um, and the wrestlers who work loose, at least in the British context, are very valued within this economy of pro wrestling. Um, one night in May, Greg uh, admonished a trainee for working too tight after he had really hit another trainee in the jaw. I said, Ben, nobody will book you because they think you're going to be dangerous, but if you get a reputation as a safe worker, well, everybody likes to hear that. Um, so care and safety become internalized in wrestling and embodied within a form of theatricalized or sold aggression. Um, and I want to call, uh, and I think that there's an ethics to this that I want to call an ethics of rowdy play, um, which I suppose points to this idea of play earlier in Dan's um, paper. So another example that points to this um, complex nature of this embodied ethics. So during one intermediate class, um, in May. Greg caused a series of strikes, blows to the partner's body that take an enormous amount of specificity and detail. And one of the ones that I could not get ever was the um, was shoulder checking another person. So um, where you you bring your hand across the fleshy part of the body in order to hit with, um, with the shoulder. Uh, I was working with a wrestler who was much more experienced than me and his comment over and over again was you're, um, you're turning too much, you're turning too much. And what that was, was me responding in a way that would actually protect me on the street. If I turned, then I would be out of danger because the back is much more fleshy than all of these bits which have things that can be broken. Um, but if, um, if I opened myself up though and the other person did in the same way, that would be a much more safe move. So. In a sense, it's a paradoxical nature of this wrestling work that you need to lay yourself, uh, lay oneself open to danger in order to make the move more safe. Um, so this, I would argue, is this ethical dimension of wrestling work, and it's a radical openness to danger, violence, and risk, 
where one places one's care of the self into the other, and specifically the other worker. Um, so eventually I, eventually I began to, to learn it and the moves became intuitive, especially with other trainees that I felt that I trusted. Um, I want to diverge just slightly into a, a slight um, uh, move into contact improvisation and show a couple of videos. Um, one is uh, called uh, A Bras Le Corps uh, from, from a um, duo called uh, Shamat Shambla. interesting moment there that you see that it is from the background of contemporary dance, but there, the pot de bois is not the, what you would see in a ballet form. Um, this comes out of um, contact improvisation, which is a form developed by Steve Paxton in the 1970s, and his background was um, Aikido, the Japanese martial art, which um, was very, very influential in his development of this. So the early performances of contact improvisation were described like drunken wrestling. Um, and it focuses as a form on trust and spontaneity. Um, so even when they become, when the performances become um, more choreographed, they still remain, there still is a sense of, um, of, uh, of improvisation to them. So this is just another one uh, from a Manchester-based duo called Company Community. That's just an example of the way in which um, there's a sharing of weight that happens. Um, I'll get to this in a second. So if um, the, the reason I bring this up is that contact improvisation as a dance form is determined by a kind of political and ethical cast um, that Steve Paxton really wanted to embody. Um, the way, um, the, for the early practitioners, it was about a kind of embodied political education. So here's a quote from Cynthia Novak. She writes, um, quote, the experience of the movement style and improvisational process were thought to teach people how to live, to trust, to be spontaneous, to be free, to center oneself and to go with flow. Um, and, and so a lot of these um, early dance practitioners also lived communally. So the, the form and the function of contact and improvisation were, were um, intertwined. But the, point is, is that this solidarity that they're aiming at between these subjects has to be embodied through touch. It can't just be something that is ideal. Um, so getting to the idea of wrestling then in embodied politics, I think that it relates to the presence of the corporeal bodies within a theatrical frame and also the cooperative nature, but it takes place within uh, the economic and social environment of capitalist exploitation. Um, so. Um, in, in, 
one sense, I want to argue that wrestlers really embody this ideal of, um, of precarious labor. Uh, I don't know if this translates to French, uh, la precarité. Um, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. so this idea of unstable and flexible labor. That in, in a way, um, wrestlers are, at least by the WWE, they're not allowed to form unions because they're defined, um, they're, they're, I think they're allowed now to join equity, um, actors' equity, but they can't form a union of their own legally. They're, um, they're hired as independent contractors. Um, so, uh, so their situation as workers, even though work defines um, the discourse of wrestling, is basically precarious. It is unstable, it's inflexible, and it, this begins to show in two senses in the body. Um, in one sense, it requires the wrestler to, um, to uh, engage in practices of uh, high bodily discipline. So one of the ways in which we see this now is what Dan was pointing to this morning with, um, with the taking of steroid, steroids and a sense of developing a certain type of physicality. Um, and this, I mean, exists today, even within the, um, the, the British circuit. So at the, at the wrestling school that I went to one day, I found on the Facebook page um, this posting from Gary, which says, everyone needs to work on their bodies a bit more now. Jim, 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 great skills and great look is the difference between bookings and sidelines. He just said, yeah, and it happened again, I was checking Facebook yesterday. He said, you need to go to the gym a bit more. That was the message to all of us in there. <laughs> um, so this is one of the ways in which, um, which the body is, is, is managed within a, a, a kind of labor economy here. Um, but another way is that um, in, British, in the British circuit, um, the, uh, there's a lot of travel involved. So the exhausting uh, amounts of, of traveling, setting rings up, there, there's a sense of not ever being settled um, as a physical being. Um, so while this... Uh, body of the wrestler is alienated, reproduced, endlessly circulated in this kind of punishing economy of precarious labor. Uh, as Foucault would say, the body is also a site of resistance, um, where he says that after in power, after investing itself in a body, finds itself exposed to a counterattack in that same body. End quote. So um, work for wrestlers, um, and I'm using it in the double meaning now, it has a value separate to that of the money wage. Um, and I characterize this value as ethical or political, although other people have said that it's emotional or, or affective. Um, but I, the underlying bond of trust in laying down one's health and safety to another person, this would be a bond that I would just define as solidarity and a kind of embodied solidarity. So working allows wrestlers, regardless of differences in identities, to identify with each other through practice. In, um, and in an economy of precarious labor, where survival is seen as individual rather than collective, um, I think that this solidarity um, can be seen as radical in the way that it refers back to these disappearing organizational models of guilds and craftsmen. Um, there is a, form, uh, is a way of being inside and outside um, the, the world or the guild of wrestling, but at the same time, it's something that anybody could enter by just practicing and being a good worker. Um, the political theorist Leela Gandhi um, conceives of the solidarity better replaced by the word friendship. So friendship she would define as, uh, as quote, all those invisible affective gestures that refuse alignment along the secure axes of affiliation to seek expression outside, if not against, possessive communities of belonging, end quote. So a politics of friendship, crucially, is not based on shared identities. Um, in the case of the wrestler's work, these particular gestures, which manifest itself as violent, might be thought of a way uh, uh, as a way of practicing through the body resistance, um, through friendship and cooperation, to this individualizing nature of precarity. There's a sense, at least in the independent circuit, that while um, that uh, while wrestlers are so responsible for making their own money, and it is very difficult to survive on wrestling alone. Um, at the same time, they don't really want to give up this, um, um, uh, what we were defining before as a kind of old school way of working, that, the, that um, this sense of 
we drive up in the car together and we work out the match you know, five minutes before. Um, this, they don't want to give up that, that sense of being a good work. Um, so what, just to conclude, um, what I focus on here is this dialectical relationship. Oh, two minutes, I'll do longer. <laughs> So what I focus on is this dialectical relationship between a disciplined body of uh, labor in wrestling's economy and the practice of freedom between workers' bodies, um, which in the terms of wrestling, at least in English, is just simply defined as work. Um, so I've analyzed this physical practice through my own training in the forum and found the practice of care, safety, and flow. And now what I'm trying to bring this to is an understanding of the way in which that um, uh, can begin to uh, be seen in dance. And the reason is because dance is one of, uh, if wrestling is a kind of paradigmatic form of precarious labor, um, dance is, is its sister uh, form. Uh, dancers' bodies are equally as disciplined, but in a sense they don't have the same, um, the same way of, of, of engaging in a, solidar in a uh, relationship of solidarity with each other that wrestlers do. Um, dance is much more competitive and, um, and only within certain sort of contemporary companies um, do you find um, that, that form uh, becoming embodied. Um, and so one of the ways in which I've looked at this is, is thinking about trying to make the dance as laborious as possible and, and finding the trust in labor with another dancer. Um, so I'm just going to show a bit of um, a rehearsal of something that I've been working on with Tom, who was supposed to be here. Um, Thank you very much.